Okay, guys, welcome to another episode of the Funky Marketing Podcast. It is uh, the post podcast in which I'm, uh, I'm hosting uh, good people who are doing good things for good people. Uh, basically, those are people from marketing, from sales, designer, entrepreneurs, all kinds of people that I meet along, along my way, along the journey, or recently on LinkedIn. It is where we all meet. So today, uh, I have a pleasure to introduce to you uh, Tara Horsmeyer. Uh, I hope I pronounced it right. She's the Director of Partner Successes Gravy. Uh, if you're LinkedIn, you know who Gravy is, a fast-growing startup specializing in human-based approach to failed payment recovery. Uh, I won't get into everything that Tara does, so I will just give my word to, to her so she can explain who she actually is. Tara? <laughs> Yeah, well, thank you for having me. Yes, so my name is Tara. You totally got it right. That last name um, can be a bit of a mouthful, but um, I, I guess who I am is a little bit more important than what I do, but what I do at Gravy is a lot of fun. So I've been with Gravy for two years, a little over two years now. So since the you know uh, very beginning stages, not at the exact start, but probably about um, about a yearish into their growth, and came on board. Uh, started doing a little bit of sales work. Um, honestly, I started part time, so I wasn't even looking for anything uh, massively uh, huge in my career at that point. Um, I just had a baby about six months before that, so I was looking for just a little bit of um, something to do. But uh, what I quickly realized is it's crazy when you fall in love with the place and you fall in love with the people at that place is you just can't help but stay away. So within a few months, I ended up going full time. And since then, it has just been a rocket ship like anybody who has been in the startup world can understand where you just wear all the hats, regardless of what your title or role is, you just kind of jump into where um, you kind of find your niche and your expertise and just what you like to do. So during the last two years, I've been able to do everything from um, starting our SDR department and growing that and really falling in love with sales development and specifically humanizing outreach uh, to also have done a ton of content development, marketing, blogs, pretty much everything you can imagine there. My background's actually as an editor um, and in journalism, that's what I went to school for to now. Um, and I've also done a lot of just relationship building with our partnership side of the business. And so that's where I am right now as we are just revamping um, customer marketing, referral marketing, affiliate marketing, and really just getting that up and running rather than just kind of like, here's a little bonus on, but um, let's make that a little, uh, a bigger strategy along with our VP of uh, channel partnerships, Britton Clark, who is amazing. And so uh, he always just kind of takes me under his wing and helps me just flourish where I am. So that's where I am today. Today. Uh, that's that's what great leaders does, right? Uh, I was just before before this call, I was uh, crafting a, a landing page for a. It's more of a friend than than a client. They are trying really new service, like they are uh, helping uh, with coaching the new new leaders or new yeah. managers, because we all um, needed that experience where we started to lead teams. And uh, there is nobody out there who we can like hire. Just here's the recording of the call that we had, that I have with, uh, with my team, give me the feedback. We never had that. So I, I feel that was like really interesting service to, to start to work on. Mm. Uh, and like, okay, so we, we, uh, we started talking about teams and leading team, managing the team. I think this is the topic on which we can, we can start. Like, um, I as I was listening to you, I remember when I got uh, into the into the first agency where I was. It is also uh, working in there. I also work in a startup, so two in a, in parallel. But uh, I was the last one who got to the agency, so a rookie. And in like 30 months, I became the first GM of the company. Nobody before me was the GM, like 15 people. And it was an interesting situation because um, I needed a couple of slaps before I can learn a few things, especially like I was the last one to come to the company and the first one to become the GM. A lot of people were in line over yeah. there. And um, like uh, I was happy that, uh, that the owners uh, did something which is not uh, what many owners would do. So they announced uh, that I'm the GM, they gave me full responsibility, everything. And 
they say go to Nemanja for everything. And like I had a list of 17 things that I want them to fix or I'm going uh, to leave the company. So they told me you implement it now. And uh, I didn't have any password. I didn't know any process, anything. So I had to build everything from the start. And I didn't hear them for like a month and a half. So we slowed down as a company, but I learned tons of things. So it, it helps me a lot to accelerate my career and everything. But I learned that not everybody wants to work like maniacs uh, to get uh, where they want to go. Some of them can do like a decent work for eight hours and go home or those kind of things. So what was your beginning in leading the team? Mm. Yeah, so number one, I, I just to comment on your story and your journey, I think it's fascinating when you find leadership, and this is something I encourage everybody that we've just been so lucky to have, who does not ever say, hey, because you are the oldest, that that means you're first in line for promotion because you've been here the longest, nor on the flip side is it that just because you're just here doesn't mean that you're not going to be up for it. So that's what I really love about it is that, um, it, and it seems like that was part of your growth too, is the organic nature of leadership spotting true talent and elevating that talent regardless of tenure because I do think that a lot of people feel um, it can it can lead to entitlement if it's like hey I've been here especially in the startup world where it's like oh I want to be one of the first in so I can be the first to move up and it's you know it is kind of tongue-in-cheek it's like well when there's only one of you then, you know you probably are because you're doing 15 things but that doesn't mean that one day you're not gonna hire your boss and in fact with most startups that's true you probably will hire your boss one day but Regardless, my my whole point and goal and focus and leadership really is along those lines of hiring people better than me. You know, like I know that I only have finite experience, finite resources, finite um, everything. I mean, we're one person. So when I look to bring in a team or I look to hire an individual, I'm really looking for someone not only to fill in gaps, especially when you're small and you're a player coach. I mean, you're still doing things. It's not like you're only leading um, when you're starting. But so I am looking for some complementary skills, but I'm also just looking for people like you who just get it, who just want to come in. They're scrappy. They want to work hard and they're okay getting their hands dirty in building. So that is a huge um, just uh, advantage, I think, in any company, but especially if you go to um, one that's established and then you bring in those scrappy skills, you are going to skyrocket ahead of a lot of people who just kind of are into the status quo, who just accept every process as it comes instead of really having that um, startup builder mindset of, hey, my job and part of my job really is to come up here and not, you know, shake things up for the sake of shaking them up, but really where can we get better and where can we improve? But on the flip side, if you go from an established company to a startup, it can be a bit of a rude awakening when you're expected to um, really be a builder and, and innovate and uh, execute. Whereas if you have been at a more established company, and um, that's to say, there's no wrong. There's not like, hey, you're wrong for enjoying a more oiled machine and just want to come in and optimize we need them too, you know, versus, hey, I really come and enjoy building things and then handing them off to an optimizer. So I think everybody can play their role. But when I'm looking uh, to build a team, and especially as I just moved into a management role before I kind of moved out of that again, um, a team role that I'm really looking to uh, just to find people who are okay doing the dirty work, doing the non-glamorous, non-sexy, standing up sales force, you know, putting in like all of those things that it's like, this is not fun. This isn't, you know, maybe what I quote signed up to do, but I'm going to jump in with two feet and we're going to do it anyway. And then um, those people who really look to their left and look to their right and also look up to help lead those around them. So um, as I'm thinking through, hey, what's a great team? Who does a great team look like? It's those kind of characteristics. But my my growth into leadership and into management um, was just a little bit of a backdoor loosey goosey way, and uh, that's what I kind of really love is because everybody has an equal shot here at Gravy to be the next leader, manager, um, you know, owner of your role because we tend to hire people who maybe don't want to manage a whole team, it's not that, but they just, they want to manage their, their selves. They want to lead themselves first and then see where that goes from there. Yeah, I think that's, that's highly important. A lot of people are, um, don't have that uh, hyper growth mindset. Mm -hmm. And um, when you are hiring people who are like 
just okay with doing what they do. They don't have aspiration like to be to be a manager, to lead a team, to do something something else. So their plateau is like, okay, I'm gonna be a great designer. I cannot manage another designer. I cannot do anything outside of it. Those are not the people that you want in your team if you have the growth mindset and you want to grow. So I think that's that's uh, connected to the culture, to the values. And a mistake that I'm seeing with older companies are that they didn't have those things uh, in place when they start hiring. And especially now, if you look, take a look at the LinkedIn, uh, companies that like like Revy who are over there and growing like Gong like all the other companies they are here just for a few years they are not older companies and you don't see older companies really like rocking the LinkedIn no right. those are all the younger companies that have the clear uh, culture vision um, storyline and everything else and when they hire people they just get into the storyline their story gets into the company's story Right. Okay. Do you agree on that? No, totally agree with that. I do. You know, we kind of call it like the top dogs and then the underdogs. We kind of consider all of ourselves like we're the underdogs. But it's so cool being at this uh, stage of LinkedIn to where really that is being highlighted and promoted. And I mean, I have no idea if LinkedIn execs are sitting around and they're like, hey, let's, you know, play the algorithm their favorite. I don't think so at all. I think it's just the fact that humans are being humans and smaller companies, people like you, people like Casey, you know, the leadership starting from the top down starting from that culture of the more innovative, younger companies, the scrappier companies are able to see an opportunity and go after it. And I think that that is as much opportunity as it just is in your DNA of leaders, you know, where it's like, I'm sure you're a lot of, a lot of the same that Casey is where he just, he can't help himself, but not see opportunity. That's literally how he lives and breathes. And it's how gravy was even birthed to begin with, but especially as we've grown on LinkedIn and we see other companies now starting to do the same that um, yes, it's easier for smaller companies, I think to just embrace a strategy like LinkedIn, but that's not to say older companies and older in, and innovators in those older companies aren't going to start coming out and um, potentially trying to put their hats in the game. But I would dare say for some of them, it's going to be too late by the time they realize what an opportunity is. So um, let's, you know, underdogs take advantage while we can. And I, I really think that that is the beauty of LinkedIn. But it's also like you were saying, I think it's the beauty of the culture and the um, the scrappy again i keep using that word but that really scrappy like let's just go for it and see what happens mentality and not be afraid to fail like it doesn't need to be you know 30 people in a boardroom saying let's roll out this big linkedin strategy or whatever strategy we don't have the red tape we can just throw stuff against the wall and see if it works so i think it definitely lends itself to younger scrappier companies but it's not to say kind of some of the more older companies that have maybe some young innovators can't come in and, and shake things up where they are too. I could see that being a really cool um, opportunity for other companies as we go. Yeah, exactly. And uh, like I'm seeing that uh, on LinkedIn, uh, when I started to simplify things, then I got like the bigger audience, the engagement and everything. And it started while I was in the, in the previous company even I was like the second man of the company, like director of operations. Uh, and there was, we were sitting, it was Friday afternoon. We were sitting in the office and I was like, okay, we need a designer and maybe we need to fill in a few more different positions, but let's just throw it out and see who, uh, who, um, who answered the call. So I was posting like constantly as I'm doing it now. I mean, uh, the CEO of the company really was thinking about changing the name of the company when I left it because it was known by my name. And uh, so I, I was sure that we were over there present. People in Serbia knew who we were. So I said, okay, uh, I just took a selfie with all of us in the office and one empty chair. So I said, mm -hmm. okay, uh, here we are in the office. It's uh, 10 minutes to four. Friday, so we are not thinking about going home. We are uh, all gathered here to discuss the strategy for the new client. And we figure out like we have the empty chair and we need a designer. 
So if you if you you know who we are, you know the culture, you know everything. So if you know somebody who can help us, uh, please tag them or share this with them. Or like if you if you know somebody who is doing I don't know like the PPC or some advertising that we needed also, tag them as well. And it blew up. I mean the wow. magazine the magazines from Serbia like uh, call me to do an interview of the new way of hiring people or I don't know like uh, but it's the same thing that I'm now seeing like the KC is doing yeah just just go ahead and do it like here we are this is the situation go ahead and uh, it's it's kind of kind of interesting because you need to really simplify things yes. and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about sales about content about all those things but like um, when I first got into the B2B and when we find like, that niche, um, it was all like basics for me. Because mm -hmm. like it's basic thinking that you need to be focused on the revenue, that you yeah. need to create the demand, then you can create leads out of that demand and just go for it and not go into the lead generation and get like MQLs from webinars, those kind of things. And yeah. it was, it, took like three, four months for me just to realize, hey, people don't know that. It's not the basics from them. For me, it's going back to basics, but for other people, it's not. It's something that's like totally new. And like when I'm seeing like other guys like Chris Walker, and Alex doing, it's, those are basic things, but we needed to simplify it enough so people can understand it. Yes, I completely agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, my, my take on that, and that's funny, Casey and I literally, you know, 10 minutes ago just talked about his post on LinkedIn and that he said the exact same thing. He's like, I think it's been so widely accepted because it's so simple. Like it's just easy. And I, I mean, I do the same thing where you lose the force for the trees. You're just trying to make things complex. You're trying to, whether you realize it or not, maybe um, sound smarter than you are or not, not smarter than you are, but you know, you want to be the expert. And so you tend to complicate things or make things Things, you know just too much for people to truly digest and when you're thinking LinkedIn which you know it is a content marketing platform I mean let's just say you know it just is like you are producing content and but you are also just you're in that you know tofu awareness stage and the more simple you can make things the better and I do think that we are getting away from unintentionally the longer you're either at a company or you're in a seat or in a role that you really can just make things um, too complicated for your own good. And when we do get back to basics, it is literally the hardest thing to do. So I know um, people who've been doing this for a long time can look at the content that really takes off. And again, this could be on LinkedIn, this can be off, this could be an advertising campaign, it can be anything that is, I'm like, my gosh, it was so simple, we missed it. You know, And people love it because they're not sitting around thinking about about your business or your company or your brand they're thinking about themselves and they want things to be absolutely simple easy to easy to digest and easy to understand but the crazy thing is when you do that and you quote get back to basics you're actually doing the hardest thing there is which is speaking to people exactly where they are and helping them understand how your you know, company, your business, your solution, your product, anything like that can potentially fit into their world. But it's like all those challenges of try to do things with less. And so uh, kind of my story of going from more to less that um, feels the same as in like, hey, going back to basics is really hard to do is when I changed in college from being an English major to a journalism major. So in, when you're an English major, it's like you're expected to honestly fill your papers with fluff and write these long essays and just throw crap, everything that you can in there. But when you move to being a journalism major, you are given a word count, you're tight, everything extraneous has gone and writing at a third grader level. So people wonder a lot of times, like why are people who have been journalists before really popular in content marketing now? And I think it's because as our attention spans have gotten less and less through the years, it actually works in your favor to get more basic, to get more simple, to trim more and then to trim again. So I think that that thinking can go in any platform, any medium, and honestly, any strategy that you are trying to build as a company or as a department or even as a, a, a leader um, is how can we make this more simple and keep, okay, that's simple. Okay, how can we make it even more simple? And if you want to say, dumb it down or go back to basics, however it is, you're going to end up 
with that one nugget that people just grasp onto because it's so easy to understand. I don't have anything to add. <laughs> I just, uh, you just reminded me of like uh, what Martin from, from my company said uh, to, to his friends. Actually, his friends told him when he explained how do we work in, in funky marketing because like we try to simplify everything. So if we start to work with a company and they already have like the content, which is in most cases forgotten on the website, nobody yeah. has seen it, maybe like 14 people from the company. Yeah. And uh, so uh, usually those companies did quite well, uh, keyword research, uh, implementing all the SEO stuff in the company. It's a quality content. Yeah. Uh, and so why the hell do we need to go over that process again to, uh, to distribute it as a copy? I mean, we just edit tone of voice of the person through which we are distributing and that's it. It's like the ready text. And it was hard even for me to explain to him, like, you don't need to think of something new. You have it already, just shape it up. And, uh, and when he explained this to, to his friend, they were like, man, like, Nemanja is so clever. I'm not clever. I'm just trying to simplify everything and make us faster because we are small and being fast is an advantage that we need to have to survive, basically. And um, so um, you were pioneering one thing and it's like a human-centric approach from, uh, to prospecting and sales. And... Uh, Reading this reminded me like back in, back in 2017, when I was uh, back in, in the previous agency based in Canada they work with. So we tried to implement um, that people who are reporting to the clients can create like a short video, just like Loom is today or Drift or whatever, and send them over, say, hey guys, how are you? This is, these are the things that we're going to discuss on the meeting and I'm sending the paper attached report so you can just prepare uh, for that. But we couldn't make people do that. They were all scared about their privacy, about how do they look, everything, and look where we are now. Yeah, it's amazing. I like, you know, it's so funny because when I tell people my story about, you know, a lot of people think, okay, well, I must have you know, been an SDR in my previous life or have, you know, worked for these companies or, and I'm like, look, people, I had no idea what the term SDR was. I'm not kidding. When I sent my first outbound outreach message, like no idea. And so I say a lot of times like that was to my advantage because I didn't know what I didn't know. And I literally was like, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it in the exact same way that I would want to receive a message. So that's essentially how I approach any kind of content creation. Cause I still am like, it's still content creation. It's still connection. But how do how would I want to receive a message? And how would I want to consume content? So I know that sounds very like selfish, but I'm also like, but I'm like a pretty basic girl, you know, like I'm not trying to be somebody I'm not. And I also know people like that's part of my um, joy is really getting to know people and to understand people. So coming at it, like, yes, you can reverse engineer it and say it's a lot of human psychology, but for me, it's literally who I am on, um, when I'm at work and when I'm not at work, like I look to connect with people as a human. So as we were, uh, just saying in Britain, really pioneered the strategy of um, our ICP when we started and even still is a lot of them are on Instagram and personal brands and course creators and people who are just the most dynamic, amazing individual and um, entrepreneurs that you'll ever meet. And so as we're reaching out to them, I'm like, well, shoot, how would I want to be reached out to like a human, <laughs> you know? So very personal, very, um, yes, like voice, video, human centric. And does, like I said last week, does it take longer? Yes, but I would rather our send team, our, our team send 10 quality outbound messages that are highly human connection and highly um, customer centric to them, persona centric, than, um, you know, spray and pray 100 automated that will go to their inbox or, I mean, go to their junk box or not even get read or connected with. And um, out of that, our response rate is insane. We do a lot of research on the prospect before, um, you know, to make sure that, hey, this is a person that we want, 
you know, to potentially do business with. But more than that, we have connections that have come out of that so strong that the way we connect with people as people still come back to me. They still pop in. I'm like, hey, I can't, you know, like we, we don't have enough failed revenue to work with Gravy yet, but we cannot wait to because we love you. And we know, number one, if you are going to treat us like this, how are you going to treat our, our customers? How are you going to represent our brand and our personalities uh, to our actual clients? Because we work with our clients, customers, one to one in the exact same way. Um, our business is really back end humanized SDRs. You know? So of course the front end of our business is going to be that way. So it wasn't this big strategy around how can we create a human experience. This was merely human centric individuals saying, I want to connect with this person and I would love to share how we can help them. But my first goal is going to be connection, number one, in the same way I would want to be connected with. And so that is what, um, that is what I'm really trying to pioneer a year and a half later. That's what our team does. But um, to me, it's again, it's going back to basics where we have tried to overcomplicate the human connection component of any kind of outreach. I think we're going to name the podcast going back to basics. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. We miss it, you know, and I'm, I'm the worst of all. I try to make things complicated all the time. And I'm like, Tara, just be simple, be a human. Yeah. And uh, look like, I think maybe one time I failed to close the client when I sent a video with the offer just one time, I think. Uh, and it was just because they, they weren't, <laughs> ready for us, they were the right fit. All the other times I closed them. Uh, I either recorded myself going through the offer and explaining every single thing, or if I created like the short strategy or an overview of what it is, I used Funalytics and I literally draw uh, recording my screen and talking to them. So they saw my face, they saw the screen, everything. It was like they're creating the strategy with me and mm. people like, Man, we love it. That's that's how that's how you do it. So, um, and I didn't do anything. It's just basic. Just mm -hmm. I, I I really got recorded myself so they can see who I am. They can see how do I like how do I actually uh, tell things. And I, I showed them each step because they needed to hear those things, not to like thinking, oh, is this what it is, or it's something else, or you know, those kind of things. And one time I was really like, um, let's say not sure if they're gonna accept the offer because I was very, let's say rude. Cause mm -hmm. I said, I'm like, um, when I'm looking at the website, uh, I'm like ashamed in your name that I'm looking at the website because mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, they have links to their social media, which belong to the, to the platform uh, on which they they created the website and it was like oh my god so yeah. I told them exactly that and I thought they were gonna be like pissed because uh, I, I was so direct and they told me okay we're going with the biggest package lead us there so <laughs> yeah they trusted you you were so direct that you established that trust but especially when you can deliver that um, as a human way, you know, because we're going to read one thing. I mean, we all know we've gotten those texts and we're like, huh, <laughs> is this snarky? Is it not like I can't tell, but when you receive a video or even when you're delivering and this is just, I mean, I think again, culture 101, anytime you're delivering bad news or like, oh, this is kind of a scathing review of your website or, I mean, my gosh, it's like, yes, you can write all that out and like, I don't know, like that might come across pretty sharp, but if you're explaining that and really showing your expertise in that, in a video or in a voice message or in a way that they can connect with you as a human, that to me is trust. Like that's what I want. Like I want people on my side, not just pointing out like, hey, these are your flaws, but also like I'm in it with you and here's the plan to take you to the next level. And I'm like, those are the people I want to work with. So yeah, sign me up for the biggest package too. I can totally see it. Um, I have a question. So you you went into the let's say into more for profit um, environment coming from the journalism, and journalism is like where I don't know if you uh, have written or you have been a reporter or you did both things. 
but usually write in a more form, formal way, right? Yes. So uh, yeah. how did you come up from, from that perspective to the way that you are writing copyright now on LinkedIn? Yeah. So that's, that's really, that's a great question. So I went to school to be, yes, a journalist and, um, but mostly an editor. So not as much on the creation side, more on taking people's, taking our reporters words, making it better. I worked in sports journalism specifically, um, after co well in college and then after, and I worked on the desk at the copy desk, which is where you get all the reports, all the, you know, all the writing, all the uh, reporters feedback, and you've got to make that sucker fit for space, for conciseness, for everything. So it really is keeping their voice and making it fit, writing the headlines, writing the decks, um, all the things to grab attention. But it is, it does, it follows the format, it's um, formulaic in its approach, unless it's a, you know, an essay or something that's different. But for the most part, it was, it was very cut and dry, um, to the point, and, you know, still telling a story, still um, making it interesting. But when I moved from there, I actually went into um, association publishing world and was an editor as well. And that's where things I feel like got really formal, you know, where um, you do, you, you write, you do not write like you talk, you write like, hey, you are the expert <laughs> editor. And so I think for me, moving out of that almost made me, um, because ugh, let's just say this, who I was in, in the email or who I was as I was working with my clients over written text versus when we would pick up the phone. This is like eight, dating me a lot. So this was mid to like 2005 um, and picking up the phone and talking to me. It was like two different people and people would always be like, whoa, I didn't even expect you to be so relational and personal because I was very stuffy and dry. That's what I thought we were supposed to. I was getting templates from other people who were giving it from other people who were getting it from other people. And it's like, why are we still doing this, you know? Um, so as I transitioned out of that years ago and moved into just different phases of my life, I think it's just been a maturation process of being more of myself, you know? So everything that I do, yes, it's going to fit the tone and the balance and you have to know your audience. I mean, that's first and foremost, um, you know, it, and your, your medium, your platform, all of that. Like you're probably not gonna write something you know, in a, on the website, like you'd write it for LinkedIn. I mean, it, it's going to be a little bit different, but, um, I think, well, I know for me, it's just, how do I connect with people? How do we connect with people? And the more you can bring out your own personal personality, the better. And that does not mean, and this is where I give our team a lot of leeway of like, Hey, how I write something and how KZ would write something or Margo or Millie or anyone else, it's going to be different how we're going to do videos. It's going to be different, but the bottom line is the same, which is how are we going to connect with the people that we're talking to in a human way that brings out our own unique perspective and personalities. And that is more than just like a metamorphosis from journalism to where I am now. I think it's just my personal metamorphosis of I'm aiming to connect with people and nobody connects with good day, sir <laughs> or ma'am. I hope this finds you well. It's like, no, you, know, you would never walk into a restaurant and meet a friend and start off a line like that. And no, you're not saying, hey, I'm going to instantly be besties with this person. But at the same time, how would you greet a new person? Hey, how's it going? How are you? I want to talk about you. Um, and that is, I think, the cornerstone of moving from um, journalism or more editorial uh, stuffy slash um, expert type of writing to relational, personal, let's connect and let's really get to what you need and how we can help you kind of writing and connection and engagement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you remind me of one thing, like we have this thing that really bothers me here in Serbia because people on LinkedIn are acting so formal. And <laughs> like when I say formal, I mean, they say, okay, dear connections, I'm out of job. So I need you to help me to get another job in the marketing and communications. I mean, you are calling like people connections, dear connections, and you want to work in communications and marketing. It's not how it goes. <laughs> and, it's, and it's funny, like after years on LinkedIn, people are still doing it. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? I mean, there are so many different expressions that you can use, people, guys, uh, I don't know, even sir. <laughs> I think yeah, like... you know. <laughs> hey, my people. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything, you know, overly uh, 
overly uh, friendly or overly, you know, I don't want to say I'm like losing words, but anyway, it, it doesn't have, it it, there's a happy ba a balance of like, hey, I'm going to admit, I don't know all these people I'm connected with. So I'm not going to be like, hey, what's up, peeps, you know, <laughs> but at the same time, like we don't have to be stuffy and formal. And th I think the same thing is just all of our words, you know, like I do use prospects, we all use it. But when I think about it, it drives me nuts because I'm like, it's not a prospect. This is a prospective buyer. Like that's where we're shortening things and it's really a human that we would love to work with. Um, so I do think that that, and I think that people who put stuff out on LinkedIn like that are shooting themselves in the foot. Um, another conversation we have with Casey too about like, hey, if you are, I know this isn't really the topic, but it's like, if you're looking for work and open to work, you know, don't post on that. Like, hey, um, where do I apply? Or, hey, where, um, you know, can you look at my profile and tell me if I'm a fit? I'm like, oh my gosh, no, like you got, like, we got to do better than that. If you were really looking for work, like you've got to find the website, you've got to, you know, reach out, engage personally and do your part of the, the job hunt too. Even if you don't know all of the people in your network, I mean, you're just not going to, I mean, I don't know, you know, I, I have not met half of them. Well, half, I mean, I haven't met a vast majority of people I'm connected with on LinkedIn, but yeah. those who I have a relationship with, I mean, it's, it's so deep that I feel like I do know a lot of people, or at least I treat them that way. So, um, yeah, that's a fascinating, I guess, style that is still, it's still happening. I'm sure just depending on cultures and depending on what and how people approach LinkedIn's use for them. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's people's first platform, right? And we are all in the um, service based companies. So in the service based companies, people are the ones who are in the center of the attention because because of the people services are good, right? We are having a business because of them. And yeah. I'm fascinated how many how many companies doesn't um, show them especially like in B2B, like, yeah. I don't know. Um, uh, it's hard thing to, to see how you can like um, promote companies which are made out of developers mostly, mm -hmm. but I mean, developers are really great problem solvers and they are people who are really doing interesting things. Uh, they just maybe not that uh, outgoing and uh, I mean, but you need to find the balance over there. Yeah. They don't need to engage to other people, but you can showcase them. You can show this is the guy who solves all the problems for clients, clients in this niche. This is the girl who figure out this, like those kind of simple things, just showing how things are going can really get you, uh, get you a long way. I mean, look at us, like company of like three people full time, Mm -hmm. five people overall and like people know who we are on LinkedIn mm -hmm. and it's it's really that simple and it takes that little just to to go over that line yeah I, do, I agree you know and that's when I when I always say like hey bring your personality be yourself I also toe the line of like that does not mean that everybody needs to be again like an extrovert over the top love public speaking love to put them themselves out there um, because that's just not reality. And I also think that that would dilute the um, amazingness that is most people, you know, because you're going to have people who are more quiet experts. I mean, I'm married to one, you know, who is like, that's just, he's a, you know, he's a designer, UX lead, all that. And like his warm as can be, but like, he's just, he's my exact opposite, you know? So he's not going to be putting himself out there doing that kind of stuff, not because he's not insanely brilliant, but because that's not where his focus is and that's okay. But if he ever did, I would want him to do the exact same thing in his own way, you know, of however he wants to build an audience or a platform or um, give back to people, of course, and just to do it in his own voice, his own style. And that I think is one of the beauties of um, what you guys are doing, what a lot of companies are doing, especially what Casey has encouraged us all is be yourself, use your voice, bring your own personal um, experience from your niche, from your area, from what you like to do. And you will, by doing that, you're going to find your style. You're going to find yourself. And let me tell you, being fake or trying to be someone else, that's not sustainable. So people who I think try too hard to be someone else when they start, um, they're going to fall off really quickly because the only thing that's sustainable is being yourself and writing like yourself and finding your voice and, and what you get excited about sharing. 
And over time, you'll probably fall into more of a niche or over time you might decide like, hey, I just like writing about broad leadership topics. So it's going to be a little bit broader that could transcend every department of role. And that's fine too. Like there's no have to's in this. I think the only have to is you have to be yourself and you have to find a sustainable way to share your brilliance, whether you are a developer uh, who just wants to talk about how, you know, their special way of coding or whatever it is, you will find an audience for that. Um, or if it's your more gregarious and outgoing and maybe you want to start sharing more video or you want to just bring more of your personality and flair and do emojis, then hey, go for it too. There's something for everyone as long as you're being yourself. There's one, there's one thing uh, I have in mind and I want to ask you, it's connected to, to all of you at Gravy. Mm -hmm. So when people start posting, uh, let's say they didn't do it before. So they, they do it because they come to Gravy, they see the atmosphere, they see how the others are doing. So they got into that mood and they want to also share some insights, some things, some opinions, whatever. But at one moment, the negative feedback comes. Mm. from somebody on LinkedIn a troll. or Facebook or wherever. Like yeah. Yeah. You, you cannot be aligned with every single person over there. And uh, I mean, we just have been through with a, that with a client. It, mm. He's well known. Uh, I mean, the go-to guy here in Serbia when it comes to finance and yeah. he's all over media, but, but on media he doesn't get direct feedback. But he mm -hmm. started to posting all those things. He's really open, direct, and really like to call out people who are doing like the shitty things. But then yeah. those people come back to have him in the comments. So, yeah. and he was like, oops, there isn't, it isn't something that I expected, those kind of things. And so we needed just to go into explaining how it goes. Like this is the feedback. Da, 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 da. So do you have some kind of system of like helping people when something like that comes just to overcome that? Um, I don't know, that feeling of, uh, of they, somebody is out there waiting for them to post another thing and to give them negative comments or whatever, or how do you do yeah. it? Well, those are, those trolls, they exist, you know, and it, it does, I mean, gosh, whatever platform, whatever universe you live in, you're going to face them. I mean, I've gotten them on my post and thank goodness people have jumped in and have, you know, written things and have kind of come to my defense without me asking, you know, I'm always like, eh, whatever. Um, and it's so great because that's when you know you've built a community. You haven't just built a place for connections. You've built people that were like, I will have your back and I will kick some butt if somebody's saying something negative against you as a human, you know, like gravy's not not perfect. I'm not perfect. Like nobody's sitting up here, you know, on our high horse saying, Hey, we're so great. Look at us. It's like, Hey, we have flaws too. And I mean, if anybody's followed Casey for any, any given amount of time, he is the first one to post like, Hey, we've screwed this up or I've screwed this up and I take ownership and this is how we're doing it. We're going to have people. We've had people come to our company who leave our company. It's not a great fit. We hope. And I say we, because I do feel like we are so aligned in not everybody's a clone. I mean, my gosh, that would make things horrible and boring. But I do think that um, Casey, Renee, Aaron, a lot of people have worked hard to maintain our culture. So when you do come to Gravy, you are hopefully going to be the kind of person that understands like, you know, there is a we mentality of like, we care about each other. We care about humans. We care about people. And it's not going to be the right fit for everybody at every season. But hopefully you will leave better than you came. And again, we have not nailed this. I have not nailed this. I mean, nobody has, but our, hopefully people know that our heart underneath everything is that we do care about our clients, our customers, our people. Are we going to screw it up? Yes. Guaranteed we're going to screw it up. Are people going to leave this? Yes. Like it's just nature, you know? Now, if somebody has had a bad experience with someone, and I'm speaking specifically not of like the internet trolls who just look for People, you know, they're just, I don't know, they've got too much time on their hands, but um, maybe somebody who has had a specific negative experience and who shows up on a post or something like that, then yes, hopefully somebody can come in and, you know, I don't even say explain because everybody's entitled to their own opinion, but perhaps give a different perspective and point of view. Because I'm also like, look, we all have perspectives. We all only know our own version of a story. So there's humility there. But I do think for anybody who's posting and if something negative comes back or comes online, that there is enough of a community to say, hey, like, we've got your back or hey, like, you know, maybe we did, I did do something wrong. Or we did do something wrong. We'd own that too. Like, I am such a, look, I ain't perfect. Either. 
<laughs> lots of lots of things could be said um, about anybody in any company. That doesn't mean that um, you know that that should refrain you from posting or from being yourself. But I also think that that's an opportunity to you know uh, just be human to say, hey, I own whatever piece of pie that didn't go right in this. Um, but also if somebody is like constant or negative or going out of their way, I'm always in the, um, I guess I'm always in the camp of saying like, that's, that says more about them than it does about me or what about gravy. So that's kind of my two cents on it is, Hey, you, you win some, you lose some, like you can't, not everybody's gonna be happy with everything you do. Um, or, or who you are mistakes that you made. And we've got to be able to be vulnerable, transparent, and stick up for each other, but also understand like not everything's perfect. And I would not expect every single company to say we have had a flawless record of 100% satisfaction with every customer or client, unless you've had one. You know? So that's just the way it yeah. is. It's not possible. Uh, and if you, if you get negative feedback, sometimes it means that you are changing people's perspective. And, yeah. and if you are not doing that, then why the hell are you actually posting? You yeah. Just, just so you can have flowers around your way all the way. That's not how it goes. That's not how the growth is happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're going to have different personalities too. Like my personality is very much all for one, one for all. Like that's just who I am. I'm like I could care less if you know you are this kind of person or that. Like I just love people. I love all people. And if you want to be a jerk bag, then okay, then that's your right to. I mean, I am not gonna tell you how to think or how to feel I'm, I'm not going to agree with it um but i do think that certain people love to you know just and that's that's themselves like that's the cool thing is is you know if you're a kind of person that's like i love you know challenging the status quo i love mixing things up shaking it putting it out there you're gonna do that like talking trash in your fantasy football league with your buddies and you're gonna do it online on linkedin you know and so i think it's fun when you see those uh, people who really do like to kind of shake things up and, and post yeah, I don't want to say controversial because that's just who they are, you know, but post those things and um, get in conversations. And, you know, I mean, I welcome all kinds of like, hey, this is my point of view. This literally is one person with limited experience, a limited worldview, and that I have not lived everywhere, seen everything. Um, this is Tara's point of view where I am right now. This is my thought on this subject for today. Open to change, you know, and that's what it is. Oops, I muted. Uh, like perfectly said. Uh, I mean, I, I was seeing, usually when, when you start talking on LinkedIn about specific things that a lot of people are hearing opinions around, that's when things start to happen. Like I just po post like a few days ago that I wouldn't hire somebody who doesn't create content or doesn't work on its personal brand. And it's my opinion. It's how do I see it? I've been through... Uh, different experiences, I have seen how it works, but nobody sees content creation part. They only see it like the personal brand part. Brand part, yes. And I like, that. I'm perfectly okay if somebody's not working with their personal brand, but if they are creating content, that's, that's for me, it's, that it's enough. If I, if I see yeah. the content is right and they don't know how to do things, basically they are creating their personal brand if they're creating content, they just might not be aware of it. We don't know it yet. We're all we're all creating our personal brand. Like your personal brand, just like a company's brand, it's not what you say it is. It's what other people. You have a brand at work. You've got a brand in your family. You should just ask people what it is because you already have one. <laughs> That's the wild thing. Yeah, I like I like to use that example. Like personal brand is the sum of all experiences that people have when when yeah. they when they come up to you, when they see you, talk to you, whatever. It's uh, are you closing? actually opening the door in front of your uh, better half when you enter in the restaurant or you aren't? Do you say hello to the person you meet in the public toilet or you aren't? Like those simple things, <laughs> yeah. that it's all part of the personal branding. Yeah, absolutely. And I love how you say, you know, this is, this is your point of view. You know what? It's your business and you can hire who you want, you know, as long as you're not breaking any um, laws or violations or discriminations or anything like that. It's like, hey, this is, you know, 
know, this is who I am and this is what I look for and this is why it makes sense. And the crazy thing is that may change tomorrow. You may have, you know, a year experience and be like, just kidding. <laughs> you know, Don't want that anymore. I'm not saying you will, but like, that's the other thing too. I think that when we get online that everybody, it's just so polarizing. Um, and maybe again, that's just my person. I get that is, that's my personality. This is my viewpoint of, um, I, you know, I think we also tend to, to hold things that are said or belief like so close that we just don't give ourselves room for growth and change. And I'm like, look, I, this is what I believe. This is who I am. doesn't mean I don't have strong opinions. And it also doesn't mean that I'm going to change them tomorrow, but it does mean that, Hey, healthy dialogue and tell me more, make me aware. Now that's going to help you in life. You know, that's going to help you with a spouse or relationship. That's going to help you with your kids. That's going to help you at work with your team is like, Hey, this is my finite view on how to lead this team and how to do this. But guess what? I'm not going to grow if I'm just looking through things on my lens. It doesn't mean I'm going to pivot and change, but it does mean that I am always welcome to um, alternative ways of looking at things, viewing things, of um, outside voices. I need them to grow. Um, but it also doesn't mean that I'm going to change my stance every second of every day. But it does mean I'm welcome that I'm hoping the way I view leading a team and mentoring people and I hope it's different a year from now, you know, hopefully better and more diverse and more rich and more understanding and more, um, you know, comprehensive to what's going on in the world a year from now. But I think about where I was a year ago and I'm like, I, I was not even thinking LinkedIn or thinking anything. And I'm like, thank God I was open to other ways of doing things and meeting people and expanding my thought. And, um, you know, so I'm like, I, I don't know, like, yes, we should always grow and change. But also if that's how you want to hire your team base today, then with your experiences, sure. I would say two things. First of all, is uh, the only thing that is uh, permanent is change. So Amen. we need to be uh, to learn how to live and love changes. And the other thing that isn't changing are people. Yeah, so true. You know, it's it's <laughs> things that are changing are technology, are the way we communicate, those kind of things. But people overall aren't changing. So no. if we if we get to know people, we will will be able to handle everything, especially like. As we said, in service-based business, it's all about people. If we know people, we will be able to get out of every situation and get the best out of it. Absolutely. That's so well said. It is so true. It starts with people and it ends with people. Everything else in the middle is just, you know, fun. So I, I totally agree. Yeah. Uh, so we are near the end. And uh, is there something that we didn't talk about, something that you want to say? or whatever do you think that's, uh, that we need to get in front of the audience today? Oh gosh, well, I mean, I think we've covered a lot of ground. I will say that, you know, if, if I can just bring home any, wrap things up, so to speak, and, and just talk about it, I think that we've really hit on the fact that the world is, it's getting more and more human, the more, um, I think, separate that we've become is it just, it's just the need for community, the need for people to be people. I think everybody really is sick of the, um, you know, and, and this is not like a knock against automation, because I'm like, yes, e-newsletters, all that, of course, you need automation at certain pieces of your outreach and your marketing and of what you do for your business, of course. Does that mean that that needs to start as your first connection? Maybe, maybe not, probably not. I would say, you know, when it comes to rethinking your strategy of connecting with your people or people that you're interested in working with, the more human you can make it, the better. Again, I, I think I've said it's like there's automation that's got, you know, its place. And then there's personalization that um, I think people can use it for either way. It's like, okay, let's find a nugget and let's personalize a line to get them to open an email or whatever. But even that, I feel like that is still missing the point. That's why I'm really hope harping on this humanization aspect of human to human. How would I connect with another human? Like, let's almost even take work out of it. Like, just get back to basics. Think about it. I want to see a face. I want to hear a voice. I mean, that is that the first outreach? Maybe, maybe not. But at least along the way, I want to have connection as a human. I want to know that there is a person on the other side of this that's thinking about me. And so likewise, as I'm going out and trying to work with someone, 
guess what? I want you to know I'm thinking about you and I want to, I want you to know that I've done my homework. I've learned something that I can because this is not about me at the end of the day. It's really about you and how I can help you. And that is, I think that that can transcend not just a service, not just a solution. This actually can get into products. This can get into software and it really should because people are more disconnected now physically than we've ever been, but we crave that connection socially more than we've ever created or more than we've ever craved. So I do think getting back to business, doing it the right way and uh, just asking yourself, hey, why am I reaching out? You know, who do I want to connect with here? And then using that as the base to create relational revenue, that's just going to come. So it's not, again, like, okay, I just want to go out and make friends. We do have targets. We do need to, you know, build, build business relationships and all of that. But then you're going to be, your mind's going to be blown because if they work with you or not, doesn't they've got the relationship. So now they can refer you. Now they can circle back when their business and fits right. You're going to be top of mind. You've just knocked off 30 boxes that you're checking at once just by connecting relationally rather than just going in for the let's book a demo kill shot where you lose everything. Exactly. Uh, I mean, this, this is why we uh, at Funky Marketing, like we're not connecting with just with the target group. We're connecting also with uh, like-minded people with the people who are after the same target group as we are with our competi competitors because mm -hmm. they will react to our post as well as our target group is. So yeah. if, they, if they do, it means that they like the content and they mm -hmm. recognize us as somebody who is teaching them at one point if they start sharing, start tagging other people in the comments, those kind of things. And it's even better than going after the target group directly. It's somebody who is doing the same thing as you are recommending you to your target group and um i mean there is there is something that i'm thinking about these days because i'm looking at who view my profile on linkedin and uh there is one thing that i didn't see up until like a month ago it um came to my profile via messaging mm. and so i got into it and what i found out is it's different that uh, found me uh, via homepage. Homepage means that when you logged in into uh, your feed and you see someone's post, but uh, if you are uh, actually seeing that somebody comes from the messaging, it means that somebody came to your profile, liked it and shared it with somebody, rec basically referred you to someone. Yeah. And it's direct recommendation. Mm, love it. That, it's, yeah, and, it's great. yeah, and it's fascinating, but I think, you know, the, the point underneath all of the points is you engage that with curiosity. And so I think the more that we just are like, huh, why are they engaging? Why are they liking? Why are they commenting? This is a um, competitor, you know, why? And so asking yourself that and allowing that to inform your content, your, what you're putting out there, whether that is your profile and you know, because that is marketing space, uh, but also just the content that you're putting out, approaching all of that with open hands and curiosity. I mean, that is, again, when we're thinking about transcending business, our world has changed, you know, in front of our very eyes these last six, eight months, and it's going to continue to do so, you know, hopefully, well, we can all say hopefully for the better, because I don't think it can get much worse. You know? so hopefully for the better. But this is one of those better pieces that the companies and specifically the people within the companies that can see this kind of opportunity of, hey, how can I be curious? How can I connect? How can I put out engaging content? How can I, um, you know, challenge the norm? And again, challenging the, dorm, the norm may just be let's strip back everything to doing, as I know Drift calls it, like the things that don't scale. And so I love that idea of like, that basically means I cannot automate this, then maybe it just means we got to hire more people. So that's, um, I'm a big fan of that. And I think that that's exactly yeah. what you guys are doing and learning. That, that's perfect for the end, for the end. Like, uh, Drift is, uh, my favorite example that I'm, I already talk about in this podcast because we, in the previous company that I work at, we bought the conversational marketing book, yeah. Yeah. but like, uh, two weeks later they sent uh, it won't scale, uh, mm -hmm. a printed version on via mail we, from the US to Serbia. Yeah. We didn't expect it. it's uh, on their own expense. And that's actually how you create fans, not only 100%. like customers, yes. but fans. Those moments of delight. I love it. And they are, they're, they're walking the walk. And so I think that that's, at, you know, when, when we boil it all down, it's not just who can sit up 
from 30,000 feet and say, be human, be human, but who's actually doing it? You know, those are the companies that I want to work with and I want to follow and I want to connect with whether they're in our space or not. I mean, that's, those are the kind of leaders that I want to surround myself with because I know they're going to challenge me to be a more human version of myself. And ultimately we all win when we do. Exactly. Uh, Tara, thanks for being uh, a part of the Funky Marketing Podcast. Thanks for chatting with me for like almost an hour. <laughs> it was a pleasure. I think we, we said so many things and we really give, gave value to the people. And uh, see you all guys on, on LinkedIn. Yeah, thanks for having me.